Okay, let's talk about pneumonia. I'm going to show a really quick um, little video about pneumonia, uh, and then we will get started talking about it. It's coming. This animation will show how pneumonia affects the lungs and how the medicines work which treat it. Click the navigation arrows below the animation screen to play, pause, rewind, or fast forward the animation. The bronchi are large tubes which are found in the lungs. Air passes through the trachea and bronchi to the lungs when you breathe. The bronchi branch into narrower tubes called bronchioles. The smaller tubes are attached to tiny air sacs called alveoli. In healthy lungs, the bronchi and alveoli expand and relax, allowing oxygen to be taken into the body. Pneumonia is an infection of the lung tissue. This causes the alveoli or air sacs and smaller airways in your lungs to become inflamed and fill with fluid. The inflammation and fluid make it harder to breathe, so you may breathe faster or feel breathless. Medicines such as antibiotics are usually given to treat the infection. They aim to reduce the inflammation and fluid in the lungs so that you can breathe normally again. This is the end of the animation. Click on the... Okay, so um, that little video shows you just what's happening within those alveoli and inside of the bronchi. Um, so pneumonia is associated with acute infections. Um, it can also result from other things as well, like um, radiation therapy, inhalation of chemicals like gasoline, or aspiration of foreign bodies or gastric contents. So like with somebody who has GERD, if they are lying down and end up aspirating on their stomach contents whenever they reflux that, um, that stuff, then um, it can actually cause pneumonia within their lungs. Um, hypoventilation, where people are bedridden or are breathing with only part of their lungs after an accident or something, um, they also are at higher risk of developing pneumonia. Whenever pneumonia is um, in combination with the flu, um, it ranks as the eighth leading cause of death in the United States, which scares the bejesus out of me, if I'm going to be honest with you, because it's something that any of us could get at any time, and we really just need to be conscious of um, what is happening in our lungs and our respirations at all times. Um, so pneumonia is classified just according to its cause. Um, typical pneumonia is bacterial pneumonia. So whenever you hear somebody say, oh, they have typical pneumonia, you can assume that it was caused by some kind of bacterial infection initially. Um, atypical pneumonia includes everything else pretty much. Um, mycoplasmas, legionella, um, chlamydia, parasites, viruses, fungi, anything. Okay, um, so typical pneumonia is bacterial, atypical is everything else. Um, viruses are the most common cause of pneumonia, but the most common cause is influenza A, which means if we get the flu, we are at an increased risk of developing um, pneumonia in our lungs. Bacterial pneumonia is less common, but it is very much more serious. Um, people are a lot more likely of um, dying from the infection if it's bacterial in nature. Pneumocystis carinae is the type, specific type of pneumonia that um, AIDS patients get. Um, it also can occur in other people who have immunosuppression, um, but it is most commonly associated with AIDS patients. Um, pneumonia is categorized just by its presenting symptoms. So this is what I was talking about with the definitions and everything earlier with acute bronchitis, chronic, and everything. Same thing with pneumonia. So bronchopneumonia, um, this is whenever the pneumonia involves your bronchi and everything, and it spreads throughout your entire lungs. It's very patchy, it's diffuse, which means it spreads wide, um, and it's scattered throughout your lungs. And I'll show you on an x-ray here in a little while how you can actually recognize this on a scan. Um, lober pneumonia only involves one lobe of your lungs. It's confined to one area, so the infection is not throughout the entire lung. Um, this is the type we probably would rather have so that our entire lungs are not involved. It can also be categorized just by when and how it was um, acquired. So hospital acquired pneumonia um, is whenever you contract pneumonia after you've been admitted to the hospital for 48 hours. So that is very important um, to determine like legal risks and, um, and things like that for nurses. If somebody acquired a pneumonia in the community and they become um, hospitalized, even if they weren't showing signs and symptoms at first, if they start showing signs and symptoms 
of pneumonia and get diagnosed with it within 48 hours of their hospital admission, then we um, we don't take the responsibility of them getting that pneumonia, um, you know, as hospital workers. I hope that makes sense. So community acquired pneumonia is whenever it shows up within 48 hours of their admission to the hospital. Hospital acquired pneumonia is whenever it shows up after 48 hours of their admission to the hospital. And we call these half and cap. Okay, um, so make sure you understand those. Um, it is very important to know that, not only legally, but just also so that you can know if there's something that you did that caused their infection or if they already had it um, to begin with. So pneumonia can be acquired just as a result of somebody already being immunocompromised, like we talked about with the AIDS patients or um, somebody that has lupus or um, arthritis or something like that. Or it can be caused by aspiration. Um, it also can be caused by, you know, just different types of infections, but these are the most common um, results of um, acquired pneumonia. Okay, so here's lower pneumonia. You can see right here is where the pneumonia is settled, in one lobe of one lung, okay? Bronchopneumonia, you see the white patches that go all the way around both lungs, is spread out all throughout. That's involving all of the bronchi um, in both lungs. Here's just another picture of um, the different types of pneumonia. See, bronchopneumonia involves the whole lung, lober just involves one lobe. Okay, so within pneumonia, the organisms eventually reach the alveoli, which, is our, which are our sacs that um, allow the gas exchange to actually take place, um, and it can enter multiple entry points. Um, the inflammatory response is very, very intense, and it can pr produce an exudate that um, really impairs the gas exchange. Think about it this way. If um, if you had, oh, I'm thinking about my funny little analogy. Um, so let's say we had like a, a mesh sac, okay, and we blow air into it. When we blow the air into that mesh sac, it inflates momentarily and then it deflates because it's mesh, right? Well, let's say all the walls of that mesh sac become solid because so much fluid and like thick gunk has gotten in there and hardened and really closed it up. Whenever we try to blow air into that mesh sac at that point, um, the air can't get through. We can't have that transport uh, transportation of gas because that thick gunk is really clogging it all up. So um, that's pretty much what's happening when all that exudate gets into those alveoli. The fluid fills it up. Um, it's nasty. And you can't have that gas exchange like you're supposed to. Um, Let's see. Um, okay, so the capillaries that surround the alveoli become engorged um, with accumulated secretions and everything, and so eventually those alveoli just totally collapse. So they fill up with the exudate. They become so engorged that they can't contain that much fluid. They eventually collapse, and that process is called atelectasis, and that is the same thing as like whenever portion, portions of your lungs collapse and that's involving those alveoli. Once those collapse, the gas exchange stops. Um, you're no longer infective, effective as um, you know, a way of you know, um, receiving the oxygen and blowing out the CO2 and transporting the gases the way that we need to. The ventilation efforts are just ineffective. So healthy alveoli are supposed to be these pretty pink sacs, right, with capillaries and everything surrounding them. In atelectasis, the sacs collapse, um, no gas exchange occurs, the capillaries die, um, ventilation is impaired, gas exchange is impaired, um, and then eventually you're going to have no perfusion to your organs or your cells. So the white blood cells move into that infected area to try to destroy the pathogens, but then those little spaces become filled with white blood cells, and then you have this um, phenomenon called consolidation that occurs. Um, when the inflammation and all that exudate increases in size, the alveoli become so filled that they're consolidated. Um, some of you might know what the word consolidated means, but it basically means when you take a bunch of different stuff and you pull it all together in one place. So those little alveoli get so pulled with too much stuff in them that eventually they just are ineffective. Um, hypoxemia can then happen because the lungs can't oxygenate the heart um, or any of the tissues. And so when that happens, eventually your heart will fail, your kidneys will fail, your liver fails, your brain fails, we need oxygen to live. Um, and so if our alveoli are not transporting the gases effectively, then everything else shuts down. Um, without treatment, eventually pneumonia begins to um, worsen, um, and 
eventually you, your circulatory system can't compensate and you're at risk for heart failure and even death just as a result of pneumonia. Um, so there are some complications that can occur within pneumonia, and we'll look at these individually as we get along. Um, but emphyema is a collection of pus in the pleural cavity. Pleurisy is an inflammation of the pleural space. Septicemia is whenever infected microorganisms enter the blood, um, and it goes all throughout the body, and you end up having infection throughout the whole body. Eventually, that can lead to endocarditis or pericarditis as well. Um, atelectasis is also a major complication, which is lung collapse. Um, hypotension, just because of the um, interruption of blood flow from those capillaries um, collapsing and also because of the lack of oxygenation within the blood. And then the patient can then enter shock if they're not getting oxygenation as they need to get it. Um, so signs and symptoms of pneumonia, it just varies depending on the type. So if you'll remember, typical pneumonia is bacterial pneumonia. Um, it usually was, is going to have a pretty um, sudden onset of its symptoms of fever and chills and maybe a productive cough. Um, chest discomfort and just generally don't feel good, um, rust-colored sputum, and then shallow and painful respirations. With viral pneumonia, you're going to see tons and tons of sputum. Um, you're also going to start noticing a slowed pulse and a slowed respiratory rate. Um, to treat pneumonia, we need to give prompt antibiotics if it's bacterial in nature. So that really all relies on us getting a, a really quick diagnosis. Once we get a fast diagnosis, we can start treating immediately. Um, and the key thing is hydration. Within those secretions, the chances of consolidation and of causing atelectasis from the increased secretions um, drastically decreases. So it's really important to give them as much fluid as we can, humidify their air, give them supplemental oxygen as needed, um, put them on bed rest so that their bodies are not working overtime and requiring more oxygen than they would at rest. We also can do chest physiotherapy and, and postural drainage. Chest physiotherapy is where you cup your hand and you pat on somebody's back to try to loosen up the secretions and allow them to expel them instead of keep them in their lungs. We also can give them bronchodilators um, just to help thin the secretions as well and also reduce the inflammation within the bronchi and bronchioles. Um, we can give them pain medication and antipyretics just to help um, you know, soothe their discomfort and also decrease their fever um, if they've got one as well. Expectorants and then cough suppressants um, work hand in hand to help make the coughs um, less frequent, but the coughs that they have more effective, meaning they have fewer coughs every minute, but the coughs that they do have, hopefully they're going to be expressing um, and expectorating a lot of that excess sputum that's within their lungs. Um, we probably are going to hospitalize these people because they're very infectious, um, and they also are probably going to need um, fluid and electrolyte replacement, and they also are probably going to have some inadequate nutrition just because of not feeling well at all. Um, so we need to replace as much as we can just to get them at a better status. Um, to assess a patient who we um, might think has pneumonia, we want to listen to their lung sounds and uh, assess their respiratory effort. We want to look at their cough and their sputum and hopefully get a sputum sample and send it off for culture and sensitivity. That allows us to know what is causing this infection so that we can treat it appropriately. We want to elevate the head of the bed just to increase the effectiveness of the respiration, monitor their eyes and nose, um, encourage um, a pneumococcal vaccine for people who are at risk. And the people that we term at risk are people who are immunosuppressed and people who are older than 65 years old. Also, if you have an increased risk of aspiration because of some other kind of disorder. Um, we want to practice good hand hygiene so that we're not spreading this to everybody we know. Um, and so then to diagnose it, we want to listen to their lungs and we're going to start noticing wheezing, crackles, diminished lung sounds. All of those things are going to signal to us that the patient might have pneumonia. And we're also going to start noticing some poor perfusion because of the consolidation and atelectasis that can occur. Um, the patients are not getting the perfusion that they need to the rest of their cells. So you might start noticing some bluing of the lips and maybe some bluing of the fingertips. Um, we want to get a cult culture and sensitivity of their sputum um, just to confirm whatever organism is causing it, especially if it's bacterial in nature. That allows us to then treat them with a specific antibiotic to kill whatever it is that's causing this. Uh, we want to get a, a chest x-ray and see if it's bronchopneumonia or lober. It allows us to see the infiltration and the consolidation within the, um, within the alveoli as well. Um, and then the CBC is going to show an increased number of white blood cells. Here's your question. Go ahead and pause it and see if you can answer it. Okay, here's the answer. 
to check yourself, make sure you're right. Um, if you weren't, look it up, study some more, and I'll see you here in a minute.